Hello everyone, welcome or welcome back. My name is Adriana. I'm a knitter living on the east coast of Canada with my husband and two kids. I have a lot I want to share with you in today's episode. A couple of kind of big finished projects, um, a few smaller items that I've started working on and for some reason this month I have a lot of knitting related acquisitions. So yeah, I have a feeling this is going to be a longer episode because I have a lot of things I want to say about each project. I hope you have a knitting or maybe a crochet project to work on while you're watching to keep you company and let's get started. Before I get into the projects, I'll share what I'm wearing. wearing. This is the Arctic Light Sweater by Veronica Lindbergh. I finished this project last year and this is my first time wearing it this season like after the summer and I'm I'm feeling warm <laughs> um, I don't think it's quite cool enough yet to wear this like very thick wooly and mohair <laughs> sweater um, but it's such a beautiful pattern I love the color yeah it's such a good like it looks just like a classic fall winter sweater the first finished project that I will share with you is by far it's the longest project. It's taken the most time. I started this project close to two years ago now. It was my re-entry into knitting. I started knitting like when I was really young, learned from my grandmothers and um, yeah, kind of knit off and on throughout my life and then really got serious about it, I guess, two years ago. And at the, at that time in my life, I needed a hobby that I could do with two little kids around. If you're a mom, you know you don't know if you're going to have two minutes <laughs> to sit and do something while your kids play or um, you know how long their naps are gonna be. So I needed a hobby that I could pick up, put down easily, and that it would be like okay if the kids kind of got into it and played with it a bit. So um, yeah, I thought that knitting would fit the bill for that and what I ended up doing was I just went to our local yarn store found a yarn I liked I bought five balls of it and I thought this should be enough to make a blanket I wanted to make a blanket for my son I didn't have a pattern to follow I didn't know about Ravelry at the time and I um yeah I just started knitting with it. I knew that I liked the seed stitch, like stitch pattern for the texture. And like, I liked that it was the same front and back. So I knew I wanted it to be seed stitch. And basically I went home, cast on enough stitches to fit on my needles. I only had straight needles at the time and just started knitting seed stitch back and forth. I had five balls of the yarn, like I said, and, um, I decided I would just do two kind of bigger panels made with two balls of yarn each, or I think they were, they were done in hanks. So two hanks of yarn each, and then one with half the amount of stitches as the bigger panels, one panel with half the amount of stitches just done with one, um, one of the hanks of yarn. Yeah, and that was my like re-entry into knitting. And it's kind of been my consistent like background project that in between projects or if I need something that's just so simple, like it's just knit, purl, knit, purl, back and forth the whole time. Um, that was kind of my project for that. It is finally done. Let me show it to you. Um, I had, it's, it's pretty big. So here you can see the, like the panels seamed up two bigger ones on the end and then one skinnier one in the middle. And I won't be able to show you the full size of it, but this is, this is what it looks like unfolded. I'll put in some pictures of what it, like the, the whole blanket so you can see it better, but yeah, it's uh it's finally done. Let me get the information up about like the yarn and everything. So I knit this with Cascade Yarns Eco Plus. 
um, in the shade 2445 Shire. And it's this beautiful green color. Um, and then, yeah, I knit this on, do I have the needle size I used? Oh, five millimeter needles. I knit this on five millimeter needles. And I think what I did was the two wider panels were 71 stitches each and then knit, or sorry, seed, seed, seed stitch back and forth until the two balls were done on each one. And then the middle one was 35 stitches, seed stitch back and forth until the one, like that fifth ball was done. At the end, I thought that it would just be, um, because they were made with the same amount of yarn, like I figured they would just end up the same length. They didn't. I thought, what did I think? I thought that the middle panel, like the skinnier one, ended up being longer than the two wider ones after blocking them. But, and I, I really can't remember. I feel like actually one of the wider ones ended up being a little bit longer. And that's definitely possible. You can see in this blanket, I'll see if I can find it. The very beginning, like where I, um, like that very beginning where I first cast on, oh yeah, it's right here, where I first started, like this section right here flares out a little bit. Like I think my knitting, my tension was a little bit looser as I was, you know, getting back into knitting, getting a bit like used to it. So I'm not pulling it or anything. It's kind of hard to tell in a in this blanket, but the top up here, like the top probably like five or six inches are just a little bit, like it flares out a little bit because my tension was looser. So that makes sense that as my knitting changed over two years, the tension kind of changed and probably evened out for the second and third panels I did. Um, so yeah, there was a little bit of difference in the panel lengths, but it wasn't enough where I felt like I needed to like undo the bind off for any of them, rip back a little bit and then bind off again. I had thought that I would have enough of the green yarn left over. Um, cause yeah, I knit to the end of two balls, but I left enough that I thought would be um, sufficient for seaming them up. So it would just all be the same color. But I ended up having to use all of the extra yarn in the middle panel. It, when it was on my needles, the middle panel was like, it seemed that it wasn't growing as fast, which is weird because it's skinnier. I don't know. And then once I bound off, like I had to join with that extra little bit of extra yarn that I saved for seaming. I had to add that in to make it longer. And then once I bound it off, it seemed way too long. Anyway, in the end, it all worked out. I didn't have to take any back. And what I did to seam it, I just took some white or cream colored yarn. It's just an undyed, I think it was maybe like sport weight. And I I think I might have held it double to make it a bit thicker and I did a crocheted slip stitch join to join the panels together. It makes a really pretty V's like this and uh, the back so my big thing was that I liked that the seed stitch was reversible but the crochet crochet join is not reversible. This is what it looks like on the back. That's okay. I This is my first time like using a crochet hook. So um, yeah, I don't, I really don't know much about crochet. I'm just happy that the, uh, the front side looks nice and even and the lines are straight. And um, I did have to, um, be careful with because some of them 
some of the panels were, well, they were all kind of different lengths. So what I ended up doing was I just used clothespins to put the ends together of two panels and then like put one in the middle and then I think one in between each of those clothespins. So it was like once I reached a clothespin, I knew that that um, those two panels needed to like line up at that point for sure. So I could evenly distribute the like maybe skipping a stitch or two to get it so they were the same length. I was a little bit worried about having some waviness or bubbling, but it wasn't, the length difference wasn't enough to notice it in the final blanket. I'm really happy to have this blanket finished. This was a big project for me and it has a lot of good memories. Like it was my first project getting back into knitting and really like having it be a serious hobby, I guess, for me. And, um, yeah, so I have a lot of good memories with it. I did start with the intention of knitting this for my son, but I have this blanket just in our living room now for anyone to use. Um, I think just because I'm so proud of it and I want to use it. So <laughs> it'll live there for a while and then it'll make its way to his room, maybe in the winter when it's like cold and he'll want to use it. So that's my first finished project and like a really like significant one for me. Now, I actually started and finished a whole sweater from my last podcast episode with like project updates. That is this sweater right here. It is sweater number 18 by My Favorite Things. This is what it looks like. It's this really beautiful, it's drop shoulder beautiful drop shoulder with a bunch of different texture happening and it's not um like it's not it's just knits and pearls like it's not so intricate cabling or um yeah like crazy techniques or anything it's just knits and pearls and it makes a really beautiful texture I'll put in some pictures of what it looks like I feel like the color isn't showing up totally true to what it is. So I'll put some pictures. I always try with the pictures I take to have the color be like accurate to what it looks like in real life. So I'll put some pictures of the color there while I talk about the yarn that I used. I used um, two yarns held together. First one was the Sadness Garn Pure Gint in the color uh, 9572 Olive which is a 100% wool, Norwegian wool. It was my first time using a Sendis Garn yarn and I really liked it. Um, the other yarn I used in this project was the Knitting for Olive Soft Silk Mohair in the color Bottle Green. So together they make this color that I have up for you to see. Um, first, I I think this was my first time working with both of these yarns and it was great. I loved the knitting experience of this. I think the reason why I was able to finish this so quickly, first of all, it's pretty, like it's a pretty big needle size. For the neck, like for all the ribbing details, I used a four millimeter and then for the like main part, the body, the sleeves, I used a 5.5 millimeter needle, which I think is larger than what the pattern suggests but um it worked better like I liked the fabric better with a 5.5 I did do at the beginning I didn't make a gauge swatch but I did kind of use the back panel as a gauge swatch kind of because you start by knitting this back piece here you start here and then you increase out like this. So I started knitting the back with, I believe, a five millimeter needle. And I, I don't think it was that I was, I wasn't liking the way it looked. I think I actually did like take a measurement um, to check my stitch gauge. I don't think I had enough to, maybe I had enough to check row gauge. Like if I had four inches, I might have. 
and I found that it was like a little bit tight um, that I could go up a needle size to maybe get gauge better. I also um, decided to knit the extra large size. I, what I wanted for this was very oversized, kind of boxy, but also cropped. So what I ended up doing was I knit everything the extra large size, except the arm cuffs and the like hem, the bottom ribbing. I did shorter than what was suggested for the extra large size. And I knit the body length to the large size. So that made it a little bit like wider, shorter, doing the mix of extra large and large. So it was a little bit more cropped, which is how I like my sweaters. Anyway, what I was saying before. So I had started knitting with a five millimeter needle and then I, yeah, just checked my gauge and it was off. I knew I wanted it to be like quite oversized and I was worried that um, not meeting gauge, like, um, yeah, being like having more stitches in the four inch square um, would make it a little bit smaller than what I wanted it to be. So I, what did I do? I think I just started with like two new balls of yarn and went to a 5.5 millimeter needle, knit kind of the same amount. And then that was meeting gauge better. And um, I liked the look of the texture in the larger needle size a bit better than with the smaller needle size. I did take a picture, which I'll put in. You can see the difference. Okay, I say difference, but really like looking at the picture, they look the same. Um, yeah, you can see the two needle size differences. And yeah, I showed it like to a few different people, like, what do you think? Which one looks better? And they couldn't really tell the difference. So I just went with the bigger needle size so that I would end up with a bigger sweater. And I, it's great. It's really, it's a perfect size. I did put my pre and post blocking measurements in my project page for this on Ravelry because you see there's a lot of like little garter sections or like reverse stockinette sections here um, throughout this pattern, which makes it like cinch in and um, seem smaller than what it will actually be after you block it. And it definitely grew and well, like relaxed, I guess, after blocking it to like the perfect size. This is such a comfortable sweater. I love that you can kind of dress it up or dress it down. Like I, I wear this just like with sweatpants lounging and I could also like have jeans with it and wear it out. I also like that I knit this length to a length that I like the look of without tucking into jeans, if that makes sense. Most of my sweaters that I've made so far, I think actually all of the sweaters I've made so far, I feel like I need to tuck them in for it to look good. And this is the first sweater I've made where I don't have to, or I don't feel like I have to tuck it in to like the way it looks with like my overall outfit, I guess. And I, that's something that I wanted to try doing more in my sweater knitting was making sweaters to a length where I wouldn't feel like I needed to always wear it tucked in. And yeah, so like I said, I, I ended up knitting like the width, like the stitch count was the extra large size, but the body length was the large size. Yeah. So the top part, this part was all extra large size. I didn't modify um, this top part because you, you knit the top part with um, like increases in things for sleeves. I didn't, the top part, that's all knit like to the extra large size. And then just like the, the length is knit to the large size. I hope that makes sense. Um, any other modifications I made were 
Oh, I chose to do a one by one rib for the collar, the cuffs, and the hem at the bottom. In all of my sweaters previously, I have chosen to do twisted rib. I think it looks a lot neater, a lot cleaner, more polished, but this pattern, I feel like would, it, it would like contrast too much to have this nice, like this texture with a one by one rib, I feel like looks better than this texture with a twisted rib for some reason. And I did go through the project pages and um, some people did change the ribbing to twisted rib. And I like the look of their sweaters, but I feel like it just doesn't have the same vibe as this sweater with a one by one rib. So this was the first sweater that I was like, I think this needs a one by one rib for how I want it to look. So the first one I did was the collar. Um, picked up all the stitches, did a one by one rib, and I did do it the for the, um, I used combination knitting in the round for my ribbing because I wanted it to be one by one, but I wanted it to look neat. And I found that combination knitting in the round worked really well for my square neck camisole that I made um, in the summer. And it made it so the knit stitches were nice and together. The V's were together. They didn't have like a weird space between the legs of the V's. So yeah, so I tried combination knitting for the neck, for like the collar of this, of this sweater and by the time I got to the end I did not like how it looked I continued on with it tacked it down like did the the fold and sewed it down did the bind off and tried it on and first of all I felt like the collar was really really stretchy too stretchy and um, I really didn't like the way the one by one ribbing looked. And I don't know why combination knitting worked so well for my square neck camisole, but it did not work for this collar. I'll show a picture of what it looked like. It just, it was very, it looked really uneven, really kind of bumpy. And I was having that problem where there was space, like the, the knit stitches didn't want to like stay together. Like they wanted to have space in between them. Um, and when I say in between them, I mean like in between the V's, like they don't come to a point. They are kind of spread out like that. And yeah, I didn't like the look of it. So I left it for a little bit. Like I thought maybe, I don't know, maybe it needs to relax. Maybe I just need to get used to seeing what like a one by one rib looks like. And I think what I ended up doing was I went to a sleeve next and I knit the sleeve. And when I got to the end of the sleeve, I started looking up ways to make one by one ribbon look neater and came across a video that was explaining how to do just that, how to make one by ri one ribbing look neater. And what they suggested to do was knit. If you're knitting in the round, knit the first round as normal, knit purl, knit purl. Then in the second round, purl all of your purl stitches as normal and slip all your knit stitches purl wise with the yarn in the back and then repeat those two rounds until you have like the length that you want so i tried it and i love the way it looks it does look a little bit different from one by one ribbing because you are like the knit stitches look a lot bigger because you're only knitting them every two rows. So they look taller than what they actually are. But let me show you what it looks like. So this is one of the sleeves. And if you stretch it out, you see that the knits still like look like knit stitches. And um, it looks really, really good. So that made me really excited. And I'll show you what the other side looks like. Um, I feel like this is where you can really tell that it's 
done every two rounds. So this is what the pearls, like on the right side they're pearls, but on the wrong side they look like knit stitches. This is what the pearls look like on the wrong side. And you can see they look like really squished, which um, I think is because you're like shrinking your knitting. I did find that I used a little bit more yarn because what I did was then I took the collar out and then I just used the yarn from the collar to re-knit it with this new technique. And I did have to use a little bit more yarn to finish this collar. So that technique does use a little bit more yarn to get to the length that you want it to be. But for me at least, it is worth it because I like the way this one by one ribbing looks a lot better. I need to I need to figure out how to make just regular one by one ribbing look neat. This is good for now and I'll keep doing this, but if there's ever a time where I want to see both sides, actually I'm encountering this problem now with um, a toque that I'll tell you about later. Um, but yeah, so I need to figure out how to make ribbing neat. I know ribbing is like, like, I, th I feel like it's one of the simpler techniques, like knit, purl, knit, purl. But to make it look neat is so difficult. I have come up with a few different ways, like just through re research, to make certain styles neater, like the combination knitting in the round worked for me really well for my square neck camisole, but it didn't work for one by one ribbing. I don't know if it's because it's thicker yarn, bigger needles. So this technique um, with the slipping knit stitches every other round worked really well for this project, but I don't know if it'll work well with another project. Yeah, I'm finding with my projects these days, it's a lot of trial and error. And just because something worked in a previous project doesn't mean it's going to work in this one for reasons I still don't know. Yarn weight, yarn, um, like fiber type, maybe the way it's spun, needle size, like all of these really play a factor in your knitting and like what your knitting looks like. So um, yeah, this worked for me for this sweater. I'm very thankful it did because after the collar wasn't looking so good, I lost my motivation to work on this. And then once I did the first cuff with the new technique, uh, it, it went so fast. I also have been really happy with how my sewn bind off is looking like tubular bind off. I feel like even compared to like this sweater, I feel like it's uh, like, it looks good, but I feel like it's really tight. Even feeling it now, like this is the widest it can go. So I can't really pull my sleeves up, um, but I've done a lot of work to try and make it look neat while not being too tight. And I feel like I've got a good tension for my sewn bind off or tubular bind offs now. I did continue my process of only doing the sewn bind off with the like thicker yarn that I'm using and just like cutting the mohair before doing the bind off because I've had issues in the past with the mohair getting caught in like while I'm doing the bind off and just becoming a tangled mess and just making the whole process a lot more frustrating. So yeah, I um, don't even try using the mohair anymore in these types of projects where it's like two yarns held together and one is a mohair, silk mohair. Um, yeah, I think that's all I want to say about this project. I've worn it a couple times now. Like I said, I uh, like how it looks just like with sweatpants and then I also like how it looks with jeans. I do like how it looks tucked and I like how it looks untucked. So I feel like this is going to be 
a go-to sweater for this winter. I also am not really sensitive, I guess, to wools and mohairs. I wear most of my sweaters, unless it's a really cold day, I'll just wear most of my sweaters like next to skin with um, no like softer layer underneath. And yeah, I've worn this a few times with no like layer underneath and it's been fine. It's been great. Quick outfit change because I was getting way too hot in that sweater. Um, yeah, I, I will have to wait probably like another month, maybe month and a half before the weather is actually appropriate for the Arctic light sweater. Let's get into my works in progress. First one is this hot water bottle cover. This is the Fisherman's Hottie Sweater by Sarah Hengstman. And as you can see, I'm a decent ways into it. This pattern I am making for my cousin as a birthday gift. Her, her birthday's in a, actually a couple days, so I need to finish this quickly. Um, and what I didn't know about this pattern, first of all, it is a free PDF, like downloadable pattern. Now, what I didn't know just from like the pictures, and I should have figured it out by like reading about the pattern, is that the pattern is for a mini hot water bottle. I, when I like first cast it on, I just cast it on as normal. I'm, oh, what am I using for this? Uh, the yarn I'm using is a Briggs and Little Regal two-ply yarn. It's 100% wool. Briggs and Little is a completely Canadian brand, like using wool from Canadian sheep, spun, dyed, everything is done in Canada. The, their yarns are very, very rustic. And um, yeah, this one is, this color is just natural white. So also I'm using four millimeter needles. When I first cast it on, I, first of all, I didn't have a hot water bottle to like check to see if it fit. So I cast it on and I knit, I think maybe two, like two or three of these like diamond repeats. And um, then I got the hot water bottle and tried it on and really kind of gaslit myself into thinking it would work because it did, it did go on. But what I didn't like was that you could see the red, like the hot water bottle is this like bright red color. Um, what I didn't like was that you could see the red through it. And I'll put a picture of what it looks like um, when I had the like smaller size on. Um, yeah, so I, I was trying to convince myself that, oh, it's going to block out and it's going to grow a bit and the yarn will bloom and fill in those spaces where you can kind of see the red peeking through. And then I got to a point where, oh, I was looking at other projects to see if other people had maybe modified the pattern to knit a bigger water bottle, a hot water bottle because the pattern says it's made for a half liter bottle. And I think this one is a two liter bottle. So that's like, that's quite a difference. And I did see some patterns that had modified the cover to fit a larger hot water bottle. Now they didn't put any information in their project notes about it. So I just kind of guesstimated when I finally came to reality and decided that forcing the smaller size to fit on a much larger hot water bottle was probably not going to result in the prettiest cover. So yeah, I ripped it all out and started over. Before I ripped it out, I took measurements of what my gauge was like. And from that, I don't remember exactly the math I did, but I added enough stitches to fit over, like I took the measurement of this hot water bottle 
and compared it with the measurement of the smaller size that I had and checked my gauge and figured out I think I needed to add like eight stitches per magic loop side like 16 stitches maybe basically all I did was you see these kind of broken rib lines here that's three stitches like a knit knit and then either a knit or a purl depending on what row you're on so all I did was I added one of these columns to each side and then I added it might have been one or two extra of this double moss stitch on each side and then same for the back too. So yeah, that's what I did. And I also like, I saw in one of the project pages that someone else had done that, like made the moss, double moss stitch section bigger and then also added one of these broken rib columns to make it fit a larger sized hot water bottle. So yeah, that is what I did. And let me try it on right now actually I'm trying it on now it, it it looks a lot better than when I had to kind of force it on and I feel like you can still see specifically in these broken rib sections um and a little bit in this double moss section but I think it's um kind of pulling a bit there the red coming through but I do think this is a more realistic um, hope for like blocking will fix that a bit. Like from past experience with this yarn, I do know that it blooms quite nicely and puffs up a bit. I also think just with the nature of moss stitch and broken rib stitch, it has little gaps in it. Like if you look at the like stockinette sections you're not really seeing or maybe you are um you're not really seeing the red come through so I think it's just a little bit like the nature of these stitch patterns I think this looks better than what I had going on the first round and I think I will be happy with how it looks after it's blocked like um, maybe it will become a little bit more opaque after it's blocked. It'll grow a little bit. The yarn will bloom a little bit, right? I hope so. Um, this is a very addictive knit. There is no cable needle needed for this diamond pattern. Um, yeah, very addictive knit. It's a really fun knit and it's going by really quick. I just have like to finish this last diamond and then start decreases and then there's a two by two folded little neck thing which I'm nervous about because I want both the front and the back to look good which both the front and back to look good in my square knit camisole when I did the combination in the round knitting for ribbing but it didn't look good for my one by one ribbing so I am nervous, yes, to um, do some ribbing again. <laughs> My next work in progress, I actually have half of it done. This beautiful mitten, this is the Lopi Braided Hat and Mittens set by Haldora J. I have made this before in like a navy blue yarn. I quite literally have like just cast on for the second mitten. I am really like enjoying this pattern. First of all, okay, wait, I need to tell you what yarn I'm using. This yarn is Lopi Iceland Fe Fleece Alifoss and color 85. It This is like a quite an old yarn. I found it at the thrift store and I have enough for like in this pretty like brownie gray color, like a a warm gray, I guess. Um, I have enough to make one of these hat and mittens set for, I'm making it for my sister. Her birthday is this month. So it is Icelandic wool. It's very thick, which means it knits up so fast. And because I've made 
like this exact hat and mitten set before with the same needle size, same yarn, just a different color. I know how the yarn behaves like after I've blocked it. And I know that if, first of all, it softens up so much. And like if I, okay, yeah, it flops, but it's, it's kind of stiff right now. And it's not that it's holy, but let me put it on. Um, like I feel like there's, see, you can kind of see my skin through there. Like it's, uh, yeah, in between stitches, it's oh, just like a little bit, like there's like, gaps, I guess. And I know that when you block this yarn, it blooms so nicely and it just puffs up and fills in all those little gaps. It, it really like makes your stitches neater. I have two by two ready here and is it perfectly neat? No, it's not. I'm thinking blocking will help this, but let's take a look at my two by two ribbing again. You see here. Okay. Yes. You can see it there. This knit column. That's what I want both of them to look like. Why does this one look like this? Why does this one like, why does this look like a straight line? And then there's like a bar and then another straight line. Like, that's not what I want the knit stitches to look like. Anyway, I'm thinking, and like when I kind of pull it, okay, yeah, that looks very nice. So why doesn't it look like that? Oh, oh yeah. So when you stretch it, like to put it on your hand, you're going to stretch the cuff to put it on your hand. So then it looks weird. Anyway, I don't remember feeling this passionate about the way the ribbing looked for the other mittens that I made in this pattern. So I think, and like even looking at the pictures, they, it doesn't look bad. I'm thinking the blocking will help with that. At least I'm hoping. So um, yeah, this, it's just a really pretty braid cable going down the mitten there's a matching hat pattern the one thing that i don't love about this pattern is that there is only one size so it is a paid for pattern and yeah you just you get one size for it i'm not using actually the needle size recommended for it but it's still coming out like good good size i'm using I used a 5.5 for the cuff and then I used I think an 8 millimeter needle. I think the pattern wants you to use a 7 millimeter needle but I don't have one and I debated going down to I have a 6.5 I think but in my project notes from the other time I made this pattern it says that I used an 8 millimeter so I did that again and I don't I feel like it it works with the yarn like it's not like uh, too gappy or something. Um, and well, I've made this pattern before with that size needles and um, I like the result of it. So yeah, that's the only thing I don't love about the pattern. There's only one size. One thing that I super love about this pattern is the way you do the thumb for this mitten. How you do the thumb is you do your ribbing, start your i want to call it the body but you start the hand part and then when you get to where your thumb needs to go you get you you start you knit to where the stitches for your thumb are going to be then you take a piece of scrap yarn you knit a certain number of stitches that you need for uh the thumb like the size of the thumb then you slip all those stitches back. Did I say? Yeah, you knit it with the scrap yarn. I found it works best if you use a scrap yarn with, that's like a very different color. So you can clearly see, and also like a different thickness, like one that's um, a lot thinner of a yarn, not like, like a fingering weight. I feel like that would just kind of slip through, but I used, I used leftovers from this sweater. So it was a uh, DK Aaron weight, I guess or sorry, DK worsted weight, knit the thumb stitches with your scrap yarn, slip all the stitches back onto 
the other needle and then knit them with your normal yarn. So you've basically just put a little section in where when you pull that out, you have a hole and you pick up those stitches and that's what you use to make your thumb. And I have found that you don't get any big gaps. You don't get any holes. It's a very nice shape, like, like to, to put it in. I, the only other ones I've knit before where the thumb is like just coming like a shoot off the side of the mitten, which I, I guess that's anatomically correct. Like your thumb is just coming off like that. Right. But if you're holding something, your thumb kind of goes in, right? And, um, yeah, I just, I really like the fit of this style of thumb. And I love that it makes it like, it's so seamless and there's no holes that you have to patch up after. It looks so good. So anyway, that is my next work in progress. I just have to do the left one now and then I'll be done. Oh, and this knits up so quick. I did this whole thing yes, yesterday and like maybe 20 minutes this morning to finish the thumb. Um, so because it's on such thick yarn, it's it goes so quick. That's that one. I do have one more work in progress. And this one I'm stumped with. I am trying to make a hipster hat. I want to make hipster hats for my two kids. I thought I wanted to make the hipster hat for my son in this navy, it's Briggs and Little, again, regal two-ply yarn. Like I said before, this is a very rustic yarn, which can be good for some things and can maybe be too scratchy for sensitive skin. I feel like your forehead it's a pretty sensitive area, your ears. So as I was knitting this up, I was feeling it, you know, working with the yarn and thinking this is, I think a little bit too scratchy for a, um, a toddler to wear. So I just, I put the stitches on hold cause I wasn't totally sure. The other thing that kind of stopped me from keeping, like doing more progress on this is that you need both sides of the two by two ribbing to look good in this pattern because you flip up the brim. So you see the wrong side. And I started, I started knitting this with combination in the round knitting. Like I said, that worked for me really well in my square neck camisole. And yeah, I started with the combination knitting in the round. Okay, it's dark yarn and uh, the stitches are kind of small, so it's hard to see. But the same problem that I always get where one column of like one of the knit stitches in a column looks good. It's perfect. It's the perfect knit stitch. And then the other one has, it looks more like straight with a bar and then another, it looks like an H almost. Yeah, they all look like H's instead of V's. So I switched to just regular, regular knits and purls. And yeah, I was still having the problem. So my knits were looking more like H's than V's. I think that's the best way I can describe it. Like they look more like a, a straight line with a bar and then a straight line. I don't know why that happens. I tried, I don't know if I tried any other techniques with this, but yeah, it looks decent when it's like, it looks pretty good when it's like this scrunched up, but this is a hat that like, once you block it and like put it on, on your head, it's going to be stretched out. And this is what you're going to see the wrong side of two by two rib. You want it to look good. So anyway, I got a different yarn, which I think will be much better, like a better feeling on 
my son's forehead, which um, I'll, I'll show you this now. So I have this started hipster hat just on, uh, what's this called? Just cords, a cord. I'm probably just going to rip it out. I got some of this yarn, this beautiful yarn. It's from a lady who lives like 10 minutes up the mountain from us and it's from her sheep. She obviously it's her sheep so it's grown here and um, it's spun in our province and it, it's really beautiful yarn. So the brand is Old School Acres. I think she has, she sells her yarn on Etsy and it, it is really beautiful yarn. It's 100% wool, different breeds altogether. So it's from this yarn in particular is from four different sheep, three different breeds, Romney, BFL, and Finn. Um, anyway, so I, I got this thinking that I could do hipster hats out of this yarn instead. I was so excited to use it. I wound it up into a cake as soon as I got home and cast it on with What's the needle that the hipster hat uses? Four, four, four point five maybe. That became apparent very quickly that it, that was not the right needle size to use with this yarn. Stitches were looking real kind of wonky, messy. I'll put a picture of what it looked like. And oh no, it's not four point five. It's like a three point five, I think, millimeter needle for this pattern. Anyway, 3.5 wasn't working. Ripped it all out. I don't have a three millimeter needle in my like Chiaogu interchangeable needle set. And that's what I, that's like the only needles I use. So anyway, I did a little swatch. Do I have it here? Yeah. I had, I started here with my 2.75 millimeter needle. And I quite like actually how the two by two ribbing looks on the front and the back. I feel like it looks, this, the stitches are really like well-defined and they aren't really doing that issue that I've been having. Then I did this middle section. So sorry, just this was the 2.75 millimeter needle. I did this middle section with my 3.25 millimeter Chiaogu needles and you can see that okay why isn't it sh I swear they don't they don't look good in person they look more like H's again than V's I do have three millimeter DPNs and so I just used two of them to make this top section with three millimeter needles and I do kind of like how the ribbing looks front and back. I mean, it's going to be different because I did back and forth flat um, ribbing for this swatch. And it's going to be in the round for um, when I do the hipster hat. So I ended up casting on a 2.75 because I really wanted to use my Jiaolu needles in the round just on one needle circle. 2.75 with the largest stitch count in the pattern does not fit on like my smallest cable um, to like yeah do it in the round so it's either like super stretched out no, I don't even think I could do it. So I, I have it just on this, um, but I did have it before on Magic Loop. And I will say, I really like the way the cast on looks. So you do a tubular cast on for two by two ribbing. And I quite like the way it looks with the 2.75 millimeter needle. So even if I do, decide to do it on three millimeter, then um, I think I'll still do the cast on with the smaller needle. Now I started doing this and I did 
how many rows? Maybe like three or four rows. And I was like, what am I doing? This is like sock territory. A 2.75 millimeter needle. This is going to grow so slowly. Also, I'm not having fun knitting this because I had to do it magic loop. And I still don't know if the ribbing is going to even look good. Oh, so this is a project that is on hold for a bit. I might try using the three millimeter DPNs. I did see that you can modify the pattern, like to make it bigger, you can, I think, add 16 stitches to your cast on. So I might rip it all out and make it a bigger size and use 2.75s but I don't know I feel like this yarn can handle a little bit like it doesn't need to be on a 2.75 millimeter needle it is technically a DK weight yarn so I don't know I have a lot of thinking to do about this one I want to focus on that hot water bottle cover and the like hat and mitten set because those are going well get those off my needles and then maybe I'll come back to this. The yarn itself though is so soft, especially for being a 100% like sheep's wool yarn, very soft and really nice to work with. I actually didn't mind like ripping all of um, my progress out when I was using the 3.5 millimeter needles. I didn't mind ripping it out because I was like, this just means I get to knit with this again and it's so nice to work with. So. I, um, yeah, I quite enjoy this yarn and knitting with it, the knitting experience. Okay, we have another outfit change and it's actually the next day. Um, my daughter woke up from her nap earlier than I thought she would, so I had to pause and I'll finish talking about everything I wanted to talk about now. Um, so I thought it would be a good opportunity to show what my sweater number 18 is it called sweater number 18 the numbers I'm not good with the numbers so yeah I think it's sweater number 18 show what it looks like on for the rest of this video all I have left are some knitting related acquisitions I have shown a couple already like yarn purchases I made throughout the month um, specifically these two Briggs and Little yarns. They're both Regal two ply 100% wool yarns that I use. This one is for that hot water bottle cover and this one is for that started hipster hat, but I think I'll unravel it and use it for something else. Also this yarn that I have my other started hipster hat that I'll probably have to rip out um, is also a yarn acquisition and I actually bought two um, hanks of this and this is a DK weight three ply yarn it's so so pretty I also got a sweaters quantity of a worsted weight yarn from the same person who sells us yarn this isn't from her sheep it's from her neighbor's sheep which are Shetland Frisian crosses so um, it's a bit different in color. I'll show you the color difference. So this one is much more gray and I think a little more cool than this one, which is either like very warm gray or a uh, brown color. So the reason I got this was I went to the market where she sells her yarn and I had intended to buy yarn like this to make hipster hats for my kids. And um, when I got there, it's kind of dark inside this market. It's in an old schoolhouse and there's not a lot of lighting in there. So when I went in, this yarn was looking more like this yarn inside the dark building. So I got two hanks of this and when I took it outside and saw it in like natural sunlight I was like oh this is much more brown than I was wanting it to be and I didn't think it would suit their like skin tones and hair as as good as like a a more like properly gray color 
but when I saw this color in like natural light, I immediately was like, I need to make a sweater out of this. It would be so beautiful as a sweater. And I know I said in my fall knitting plans video that I wanted to make either an Eon sweater or a porcelain sweater next. But when I saw this yarn and just the feeling of it and the color of it, I thought it would be really nice as a just a plain stockinette sweater but with a v-neck um maybe like a two by two ribbed v-neck with i think two by two rib cuff and hem i think that would look really really nice so i'm thinking of doing a harlow sweater v-neck with it and i'm really excited it's it looks so so beautiful and it feels so nice did I say it's worsted weight? And I debated, I thought I could buy like a silk mohair to go with it, but I think I wanna try it just by itself. The only thing that is kind of making me reconsider and, and thinking that maybe I should get a silk mohair to go with it is the fact that um, one of the one of the hanks looks maybe it's this one it looks a little bit darker than the rest of them and that is making me a bit worried that they're all a little bit like have a bit of variation in their coloring even though they are all it says they're all from the same lot that makes me a little scared because i have had issues with that before like same lot but having like three different colors come out of it um so that does have me a bit nervous I'll, I think I'll just like look at all of them in some bright natural light um, to see if there's any like significant color differences. And if there is, there was one that I thought I was like, okay, that one looks kind of darker than the rest. I might use that for like the bottom hem or something. Um, and I might actually have even overestimated the amount of yarn I need so I might not even need the one that looks a little bit different so yeah that's my plan right now for that yarn the last knitting related acquisition I have to share with you are actually some knitting magazines I think they're all magazines um my aunt works at a thrift store nearby and she knows I love knitting. And so when she saw these come through to the thrift store, she thought I might like them and gave them to me. So I have a couple pom-pom magazines or booklets. This one, which I thought looked kind of cool. It's called Take Heart, A Transatlantic Knitting Journey by Fiona Alice. And I think this is actually published by Pom Pom as well. Yeah, Pom Pom Press. Uh, this one is called Crush Kim by Kim Hargreaves, which just flipping through it, it looked like there's a lot of like lacy, lightweight things. And then I have this edition of the Lane Knitting Magazine from summer 2018. And this is the one I've kind of flipped through the most and found some things that I want to add to my list. So yeah, it's nice to have some physical knitting inspiration to look through instead of just scrolling on my phone all the time for ideas. Um, even though you have everything to look at for inspiration on your phone. Um, yeah, it's sometimes nice to just like actually flip through a book for your next project ideas or color combinations. I think that is everything. Thank you so much for joining me for this episode. I hope you got some progress done on whatever project you're working on and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.